The movie starts off with a scenic garden consisting of all sorts of flora. It's a park and there are loads of happy families there. Among them is Indy Zimmerman, an ordinary girl who loves providing others with happiness. It's her birthday and all the children have fun with her. She's at the park with her friends and her beautiful mother who gives them all sweets. Indy talks about how her life has always been cheerful and perfect, thanks to her life. She hadn't known true pain with her mother around and wishes that it remains that way. All that she is now, she owes to her mother. Indy has a lot of fun with her mates, while her mom helps all the children at the park and plays along with them. She even gives Indy a beautiful kitten as a gift which she accepts gladly. It's Indy's eighth birthday and her mother made sure to have everything perfect. Indy's dad left before she was even born. So, it was just her and her mom until one day, her mother tragically died. She was just 10 years old when this happened and it was the first time she ever experienced true pain and grief. As soon as her mother died, Indy's life became upside down. She moved in with her uncle and aunt who made sure to give her only the bare minimum and nothing else. They even insulted her mother and the funeral held for her, but Indy couldn't say anything as she was about to live with them. Indy soon moves into her uncle's home where she is given a small room in the attic. It had obviously been used for storage space with all the junk and clutter laying around. But despite all this, Indy doesn't say a word and is just grateful to have a roof over her head. Her aunt is very mean and doesn't even let her grieve for her mother. After all, her cat is the only memory of her mother she has now. Her aunt tells her that she needs to do the house chores just like everybody else and leaves the room. Indy lays down on the dirty, uncomfortable mattress and falls asleep. Fast forward to years later, Indy has grown a lot now. Her cat is still with her and she loves it more than anything. She wakes up and gets into the kitchen to make breakfast for everybody. Her cousins are spoiled brats and her aunt just enables them even more. One morning, one of her cousins talks about her phone screen being cracked and throws it in the bin. Indy grabs the phone and keeps it. She hasn't had a phone until now and her cousin's phone is as good as new. She is ecstatic to finally have a phone and completes her chores soon. Her cousins, Jada and Caitlin, go shopping soon after and Indy leaves for school. She has a typical high school life surrounded by all sorts of cliques. Among them is Bryant, the popular jock. Indy finds him annoying but Jada and Caitlin fawn over him. Brian and his sister, Mackenzie, walk through the school corridors while Indy watches them. She gets through all of her classes and sits down alone for lunch. While Jada and Caitlin go out to get some fast food, Indy is stuck with her boring canteen lunch. Her aunt, Clarice, basically treats her like nobody but Indy doesn't take it to heart. Indy has a couple of friends. Among them is Maxton, her best friend. He keeps her sane and helps her with all of her problems. That's how Indy's typical day is. She comes home walking while her cousins drive off in their car. Her life isn't perfect and she misses her mother a lot. Her uncle and aunt constantly make fun of her mother and she gets really uncomfortable. One day, she gets really late and runs off to school but unfortunately, her cat, Ms. Wiggins, runs into the road as well. Before she can stop it, a car runs Ms. Wiggins over. It's none other than Bryant and Indy is devastated. She has no one now and can't get over the pain of losing the one she loved so much. Bryant constantly apologizes while Indy sobs holding her lifeless cat's body, but Caitlin and Jada just laugh. They even go as far as to mock her for it. At school, Jada and Caitlin cling to Bryant like absolute leeches, while Indy glares at them. As he gets closer, she hides behind her locker. Maxton approaches her but she ignores him so as to let Bryant pass. But he notices her anyway and runs towards her. Indy grabs Maxton and runs out of there. He continues running after her to apologize but she completely ignores him. At P, Indy and Maxton go running together where she tries to avoid every question about Bryant aimed her way. While she's speaking to Maxton, she falls down brutally. Bryant comes up suddenly and helps her up. He tries to apologize to her profusely but she keeps brushing him off. She finally blows up on him and tells him that he never even noticed her before. He only became cordial once he ran over Indy's cat. She begs him to leave her alone and walks away. After the incident, Bryant feels really guilty but can't do anything about it. At home, Mackenzie and her father have fun chatting but Bryant is still not over what Indy said. His father, Dr. Bailey asks him what's wrong and Bryant finally confesses that he wants to apologize to Indy. He tells his father about her and by some luck, Dr. Bailey happens to know exactly who she is. He tells Brian everything about her so that he can start being a friend to Indy. The next morning, Indy gets really sick and doesn't go down to do her chores. Clara screams at her for being late but after seeing Indy's awful condition, she walks downstairs. She tells Indy to clean up the house and do all the chores later on. Clarice even insults Indy before storming out for her work. At school, Bryant walks up to Maxton and asks about Indy who tells him that she's sick. Bryant nods and Maxton tells him about Indy's aunt being very strict. He adds that talking to Indy isn't going to work, since Ms. Wiggins was very special to her. But Bryant decides to not give up. He eventually goes to her house. There, Clarice greets Bryant and even sweetens up to Indy. Indy is so confused by her aunt's drastic change in behavior. That's when Bryant walks into her room with gifts in order to apologize. Indy is clearly annoyed by him but decides to hear him out. He apologizes for running over Ms. Wiggins and even asks to be friends. Indy tells him that she doesn't want to be his friend. She adds that he only wants to be her friend out of pity and she's looking for genuine friends. Bryant understands and asks for a fresh start. 
He even offers her some delicious food which she gobbles down in an instant. Indy contemplates for a second but decides to be his friend anyway. As they're talking, Brian initiates a conversation about how she might need him sometime, but Indy gets offended by it. She calls him out on his selfish behavior, because the only reason he came to her is to feel better about himself. Bryant realizes this and apologizes again saying he is the one who needs her. He confesses that he wants her companionship and asks to go for a walk. She doesn't want to and denies but Bryant keeps on insisting, so she hesitantly agrees to his request. The two take a walk in a park with lots of flowers around. That's when Brian asks if Indy still misses her mother a lot. Indy says yes. Bryant then sits her down and says that years ago, his father was the one who last saw Indy's mom before she died. Dr. Bailey was the witness to Indy's mother's death. Since he knew that she wasn't going to make it, he held her hands and let her say her last words. That's when Indy's mother asked him to tell Indy that her real name is Cindy and she loves her a lot and will always be there for her. Indy listens in and tears glisten in her eyes. She confesses that Dr. Bailey had actually approached her during the funeral and comforted her. She thanks Brian and his dad for it. Indy then confesses that her true name is Cindyella. Her mother named her and even used to call her Cinderella. Brian consoles her and they talk for hours in the park. He comforts her and apologizes for what she's been through. Indy assures him that it's fine since no one's life is perfect. Brian adds that even though bad circumstances occur, you get the chance to learn from it and get inspired by it. It helps you become stronger and defines you for who you are. The two return soon after and Brian asks Indy about her cousins. She tells him that they don't really like her, and that's why she always prefers to be alone. He asks why she stays in such a small humid room when the house is pretty big. Indy doesn't answer that question and he gets the hint. He starts looking around and asks Indy about her toys and gifts. She looks at him with a perplexed look and admits that she basically sold everything she had for her mom's funeral. The only she could have was Ms. Wiggins. Bryant feels extremely guilty and as he's about to say something, he hears the shrill voice of Jada. Jada runs into the room and Bryant panics. He doesn't talk to her much but she just doesn't leave him alone while side-eyeing Indy. Caitlin comes in as well and the two of them cling to him. They invited Bryant to a bunch of stuff but he just declines and runs out of the house. As soon as he's gone, Clarice screams out for Indy to clean up all the mess. She goes on to list out a bunch of chores to do for Jada's upcoming party. Indy doesn't say anything and agrees to all of it. She's even uninvited from Jada's party. Indy doesn't take any of this to heart and starts doing her chores. She's about to take the trash out when Maxton joins her. He helps her with it and they soon part ways. It's already evening and Indy is still working. Jada and Caitlin pretend that she doesn't even exist when the guests arrive. The party starts soon and Indy hides in a corner, cleaning up any mess. Jada and Caitlin brag about how they've been working so hard, when Indy clearly was the one doing all of it. Indy goes and hides in her room when Bryant comes in. He asks for her but Jada and Caitlin completely ignore the question and latch onto him again. Night falls and Indy goes to the backyard for some fresh air. She lays down on the trampoline and looks up at the stars. She talks to her mother and admits how she's so worked up and tired. She misses her mom a lot. Indy just closes her eyes and reminisces the moments she spent with her mom. Just then, Bryant jumps in with her and confesses that he's been trying to find her the whole time. Indy just smiles and asks about the party, to which Bryant replies that it was good but he missed her a lot. He asks her why she's so shy but Indy just tells him that she isn't. She just wanted to be alone as she was really tired. Indy goes on to tell him that all the cooking and cleaning was done by her. Brian is impressed but he also feels bad for her. He asks why she doesn't hang out with her cousins and Indy doesn't really have an answer to that. He realizes how they treat her and calls her the real Cinderella. Indy's face falls as that's what her mom used to call her. She tells Bryant that she's nothing like Cinderella. He believes her and asks her to hang out with him instead. Indy and Bryant go out to eat. Indy loves the food there and Bryant tells that the place is very special to him since his mom brought him there all the time. She asks him why it stopped, to which Bryant replies that even his mother had died in a brutal accident. Indy feels really bad and sympathizes with him. He tells her about how he coped with losing his mother who happened to be his biggest supporter. Indy listens carefully and Bryant adds that his mother would encourage him to always pursue his dreams and hobbies. Indy replies that she actually relates to him. Bryant smiles and says that they should do this more often. She happily agrees but then Bryant says that he wants to get to know her more often. He wants to start a relationship with her. Indy panics and asks him to slow down since they don't even know each other that well. Bryant agrees but promises to not give up. For now, he's ready to settle as just friends. Indy admits that even though she'd like that, Clarice would go ballistic once she found out, since she doesn't want Indy to have a boyfriend. Bryant tells her that he's ready to sneak and meet her but Indy suggests, that he'd be better off starting a relationship with one of her cousins. Brian immediately shuts her down saying he isn't interested in them at all, and how they're so annoying. The two laugh and have a great night. He drops her home and asks her out on a date. She hesitantly says that they aren't meant to be together. Indy adds that they're from two completely different worlds and she just doesn't fit in. But Bryant doesn't care. He tells her that he really likes her and absolutely loves spending time with her. When she realizes that there's no way Bryant would listen, she rejects him saying he's not her type. 
Bryant doesn't seem to buy that excuse, and that's when she confesses that if their relationship ever became public then Clarice, Jada, and Caitlin would make her life a living hell. She adds that she isn't even allowed to stay out after school. Bryant finally suggests that they keep their friendship a secret for a couple of weeks to see how that goes. He even says that he wants to be her boyfriend one day. Indy smiles and agrees to keep their friendship a secret. Indy is about to leave but then they get very close. She blushes and runs inside. The next day, Indy is at her class when Bryant texts her asking to meet up. Indy slowly starts catching feelings and agrees. She runs out of the class as soon as it ends. Maxton notices this and asks her what's going on. Indy decides to keep it a secret and doesn't tell him anything. Maxton keeps on pestering her about the secret and Indy finally tells him. She asks him to promise not to tell anybody and Maxton agrees. That's when she tells him all about Bryant and how he likes her. She says that it's really weird and sudden but true. Maxton can't seem to wrap his head around it. He is shocked too and proceeds to ask Indy how he reacted to her already having a boyfriend. Indy is confused by the question as she's never had a boyfriend. When she asks what he's talking about, Maxton says that he's her boyfriend. Indy is shocked and tells him that she didn't even know he liked her like that. Maxton tells her that he's always liked her but couldn't propose, since Indy wasn't looking for a boyfriend. He had been waiting for this change all along. Indy can't comprehend all of it and promises to talk to him later about this whole fiasco again. After class, the two get really awkward once again since their relationship is extremely confusing now. Maxton starts talking about how he thought even Indy liked him as well, but was just too scared to admit it. Every time Indy felt low and scared, Maxton was there for her and she only showed her vulnerable side to him. This led him to believe that they were meant for each other. Indy feels really guilty and embarrassed but admits that she's never liked Maxton like that. She only considers him her best friend. Maxton understands this and doesn't really say anything. Indy still can't seem to grasp Maxton's confession, so she asks him why he never asked her out or kissed her, to which he replies that she didn't seem ready. As Indy just looks at him, Maxton confesses that he wants to make it official with her and kisses her. Indy is taken aback by this. Maxton asks her on a date and Indy hesitantly says no, but he keeps on persisting. She finally gives up and says yes to see where this leads to, and also because she doesn't want to hurt his feelings. At home, Indy is working when Bryant comes to meet her. He asks her what's up and Indy tells him all about the situation with her and Maxton. He's shocked to hear that Maxton even kissed her. Indy confides in him that she told Maxton about them but it just backfired. Bryant nods and asks her what she wants to do next. He knows that Maxton knows her more and even Indy might like him. But Indy says that she's never looked at Maxton more than friends and besides, she wants to continue this secret relationship with Bryant. He fully supports her and even encourages her to give Maxton a chance. Bryant tells her that he wants a chance too, but if she doesn't like him enough to be his girlfriend then he's happy to just be her friend. Indy is relieved by this and agrees to Bryant's suggestion. The next day, Maxton and Indy go on their first date. The air is really tense and they do some adventurous activities together. Indy confesses that she thought he was kind to her because they were best friends. That's when Maxton admits that he ditched his friends and pocket money to eat out, just so he can be with her. All of his friends and family consider Indy as his girlfriend and even tease him about it. Only now does Indy realize all that he's done for her. He's always thought the two of them doing fun activities together as dates, but couldn't get the guts to blurt it out to her. He sighs and tells her that he might not be as popular as Bryant but he cares about her a lot. All he asks in return is for her to care as well. Indy understands this and tells him that she does care about him. She even asks to go to his next soccer game which makes Maxton really happy. He knows Clarice won't be happy with that but Indy promises that she'll deal with it. When she returns home, Clarice instantly asks her where she was. Indy lies about being in a group project and goes to do her chores. At night, Bryant calls her and asks all about the date. He inquires if they're official now. Indy simply responds that she's still thinking about it as she doesn't want to rush into anything. She tells him about all the things Maxton sacrificed for her like deliberately eating school lunch to sit with her. Brian asks her why she doesn't go out like her cousins. Indy shyly exclaims that she doesn't get an allowance to eat out. He is appalled by this and tells her to stop being so nice, since her so-called family is clearly using her as free labor. Indy tells him that she has to, because they're the only family she has now. Brian asks her to walk with him to school the next day and she agrees. He hangs up the call and goes to his dad to talk about Indy. He tells his dad about how she's so special and wants her to be his, but now he has dug himself a hole by letting her date Maxton instead. Dr. Bailey assures him that he was just doing what a good friend should, and to not worry about it. Brian even tells him about the mistreatment she suffers at the hands of Clarice and her uncle, David. He tells his dad about how he's stressed and worried about her but can't even do anything about it. Dr. Bailey consoles him saying everything will be okay soon. The very next morning, Maxton and Indy go running. They joke around and have fun banter. This makes Indy really confused about her feelings toward both Maxton and Bryant. After school, Bryant comes up to her and asks if she wants to hang out with him. Indy agrees and they go to a nearby playground. They take a walk around and Bryant tells her that the playground is very close to him. 
He used to play there all the time with his mom and so he comes here often to relive those memories. He enthusiastically talks about how he loves playing on the merry-go-round. After a long discussion, Indy and Bryant decide to just swing for a while. While doing so, Brian asks her more about Claris. Indy tells him that she's really mean which is why she doesn't like to go against the rules very often. Brian tells her that she shouldn't work like a servant. He even offers to take all the blame for it but Indy denies saying that would get her into even more trouble. They continue talking but right then, Jada and Caitlyn catch them together. They drive away after rolling their eyes. Indy panics thinking Jada and Caitlyn will tell on her. Bryant and her then run as fast as they can toward her home. She's really scared not knowing what excuse to make this time. As anticipated, Indy sees Clara standing at the door. She walks towards her timidly. Bryant decides to not leave Indy alone and follows her nonetheless. Claris talks to Bryant politely and asks him to leave. She orders Indy to come in with her and Indy does so without any question. Inside, Claris yells at Indy and gaslights her into thinking that Bryant is only with her, because he eliminated her cat. Claris then goes on to threaten Indy to get out of Jada's way, since she's always had a huge crush on Bryant, and prom is just around the corner. Indy nods quietly and goes to do the house chores. At night, Bryant calls her and asks her if she's alright. Indy assures him that she's okay and that she's used to this. He asks her to walk with him again, but she declines saying she has to get to Maxton's game, and if Claris catches her with him again that she'll definitely get grounded. She thanks him for sticking up for her and hangs up soon. It's Maxton's game day and Indy reaches there ahead of time. She looks around for Maxton and even waves at him. The game begins and everything is going well. Indy watches all of them keenly and even cheers for Maxton. He gets injured in between the game but continues on nonetheless. After the game, Indy approaches Maxton and congratulates him for such a great game. She asks him if he's okay and even helps him walk around. He thanks her for coming and cheering him on. Then, Maxton confesses that he really likes being with her and he's never felt this way before. That's when Maxton tilts his head and kisses her softly. The two of them then walk hand in hand and the day ends. At night, Brian calls and asks about the game. Indy chats with him for a while and tells him that she has started to sneak in and out of the house. But just then, Claris calls for her outside. Indy hurries downstairs to see Claris and David waiting for her. As she sits down, Claris interrogates her about where she was the whole day. Indy truthfully tells her she was at Maxton's soccer game. Claris further asks if she kissed him to which Indy replies that she did. It was a small peck after all. David tries to walk out but as he does so, he calls Indy's mother a pleasure giver. Indy can't stand it anymore and retorts back saying it was her choice. She even commands him to not talk down on her mother anymore. She stands up for her mother as tears stream down her face due to anger. Indy even screams out at them saying they never even considered her family and that she's just a burden to them. Claris taunts her even more which leads to a huge intervention. David starts fuming and grounds Indy, saying that he'll punish her very harshly for her behavior. Indy storms off to her room and cries her heart out. She can't stand it anymore. She packs her bags with tears streaming down her face. Indy fully breaks down not knowing what to do. Just then, she sees Bryant's message asking if she's alright. She just texts him back saying she's okay and immediately calls Maxton. He's at a clinic since he was injured. Indy tells him about all that's happened while crying but Maxton just asks her to give Claris and David some time. She tries to tell him about all the harsh things they said to her, but he hangs up after the doctor comes in to check on him. Indy can't stop her tears. She sees Brian's text saying he has come to her house. Indy sneaks him inside through the side door. Brian enters her room to see her stuff packed. He's really confused by this. Indy tells him everything that David and Clara said to her after the kissing incident. Brian is hurt to hear that she kissed another guy but he brushes it off for the time being. He just listens to her patiently. He agrees to Indy moving out and even offers help to find her a place to stay. Bryant further adds that she should get away from them as soon as possible. Indy gets taken aback by this and listens to all the stuff Bryant says. He invites Indy to stay at his house. Indy is really confused and scared by this. Bryant calls his dad immediately to ask for some advice. In the meantime, he urges her to keep packing. Finally, Bryant comes to her with a sullen face. Dr. Bailey is a professional therapist and is his duty. He has to now call Child Protective Services. He has Brian's confession and since Indy is a minor, he could go to jail if he didn't report it. Indy is shocked by this and starts panicking while Brian apologizes profusely. Indy tells him that she can't do this. She's scared of what will happen to Jada and Caitlin but Brian assures her saying she needs to think about herself now. He asks Indy to come with him since she's not safe there. She tells him that she's fine and David probably wouldn't punish her really badly. Brian on the other hand doesn't want to take any chances and urges her to just come with him. He grabs her bags and ushers her into his car. They finally reach his house and Dr. Bailey invites her in. He offers to give her a bedroom and requests her to answer some of his questions, so that he can decide what to do in the morning. Dr. Bailey sits her down and asks her a couple of questions before letting her rest for the night. Indy is really scared and asks Bryant what will happen when Claris finds out about all this. Bryant reassures her that everything will be fine and her life will get a lot better soon. Indy nods and Bryant decides to leave. But that's when she grabs his hand and thanks him for everything. The two of them hug tightly and Bryant kisses her on the head. 
He leaves soon after, and Indy falls asleep. The next morning, she sees a picture of her mom by her bedside and smiles. Indy walks downstairs to see Brian's family have breakfast. Everyone greets her cheerfully. Mackenzie consoles her and tells her that she's glad to have finally met her. Brian offers her a delicious meal and Dr. Bailey is really happy to see that. He even offers to let her stay in their other house which is very close to their main house. This way, she could be close to them but also have a little privacy. Indy is about to eat when the CPS members come in, and ask Dr. Bailey to escort Indy back to David's house for further discussion. Dr. Bailey doesn't allow that in protests but he doesn't have much power over it. Indy is heartbroken and runs away from Bryant's house in a state of agony. Bryant runs after her but she doesn't stop. She finally falls down on the ground and sobs her eyes out. Bryant catches up to see her shaking with fear. He tries to console her saying that she doesn't have to go back there. He explains the whole situation to her and tells her that legally she doesn't have to go back. Bryant tells her that she has to give an interview talking about all that she's suffered. She can do the interview wherever she wishes to. He answers all her questions. Indy then asks Bryant why he's doing all this for her. He simply replies that he can't just sit around and watch her getting treated horribly. She doesn't want to be a burden to them but Bryant assures her that she isn't. Indy starts to feel a little better. She starts to feel like everything is okay. Bryant stays with her through all this and they get closer and closer. Both of them walk back to Bryant's house and Indy sees everyone so worried about her. Mackenzie and her younger sister give her a tight hug before letting her in. Dr. Bailey explains to her that she now has to go to the CPS officer's office instead of Clarice's house. Indy agrees to it and asks what will happen after the interview. Dr. Bailey tells her that a court case will be issued soon to free her from Clarice, and David. Indy is scared as to what might happen if they lose the case, but everyone tells her that they'll surely win. And regarding what's going to happen to David and Clarice is up to the judge. Indy is escorted back inside while Dr. Bailey says that he'll take care of her. He even asks to be her foster parent until a permanent solution has been figured out. She's so glad that she found Bryant and is grateful for everything his family has done for her. The day of the interview comes in and Clarice is practicing her fake sobbing. She wants to gain sympathy from everyone and bring Indy back. As soon as Indy comes in, Clarice starts bawling her eyes out to make it seem as if she's really stressed. Indy provides all the information needed and gives her interview successfully. She's really nervous but Dr. Bailey helps her through it all. Indy still feels bad about dragging Clarice and David through the mud since they gave her a roof anyway. But Dr. Bailey tells her that she's just too kind to see their mistreatment. The two of them soon head home for a movie night. As they're watching a movie, Indy gets a text from Maxton asking if she's okay. Indy just replies that she has now moved out. She doesn't know how to explain the whole situation so Bryant does it for her. He sends Maxton the text and tells him that he's welcome anytime. Around midnight, Maxton calls Indy to check on her. He seems really worried. He apologizes for not helping her out and listening to her but Indy says that it's fine. She understood that he had his own stuff going on. She asks Maxton to take notes for her since she wouldn't be going to school for a couple of days. Maxton gladly agrees and asks to come over the next day. Indy agrees and they hang up. The next day, Dr. Bailey tells her that her mother had actually left her a huge inheritance. Indy is shocked by this as she never even knew about it. Apparently, on top of selling all of her mother's stuff, Clarice and David took all the inheritance for themselves. The good news is that she'll be getting it all back with additional compensation. Clarice and David are now in a lot of trouble. Indy sits around the pool to comprehend all of the new information when Bryant joins her. She exclaims how she can't even fathom how cruel her uncle and aunt were to her. She doesn't want to ever see them again. Now that the school year is almost over, she won't have to face Jada anymore as well. That's when Brian asks her to go to prom with him. Indy is reluctant but agrees anyway. She's scared that her cousins might be angry, but Brian tells her to stop thinking about what they might think. Indy is shocked that someone would ever ask her to prom. She's really excited about it as well. Just then, Maxton comes over to talk to Indy. She goes to meet him. Maxton meets her by the door and asks if she's okay. When she says she is, he tells her that Brian is the perfect guy for her. Even though they've spent years together, Maxton couldn't ever ask her out sooner. Things would have been different if he had. Maxton further adds that she is his reason for happiness and doesn't want to lose her. He tells her that he couldn't really figure out what she wanted from life but now that he has, it's too late. Indy tells Maxton all about her case and says that Dr. Bailey helped her a lot. Maxton says that he's happy for her even if it's not with him. Indy feels really guilty and apologizes but Maxton asks her not to. It's not her fault for liking Bryant. Despite all this, Indy asks him to stay as her best friend. She doesn't want him to walk away from her. Maxton gladly agrees and they hug. He bids her goodbye and leaves. Indy is really happy with how things turned out. She knows now that everything will be okay. Dr. Bailey even testifies for her in court, and they successfully win the case with her inheritance returned back to her along with a hefty sum of compensation. She thinks that her future is really bright. She is now loaded and has the most loving family ever. Indy buys herself a car and a beautiful dress with a small percentage of the money. Bryant and she are now dating. 
She moved into their other house to avoid long proximity. Indy happily goes to prom with Bryant in her gorgeous dress. After all this, the thing she is most grateful for is her newfound family. Brian is stunned to see how beautiful she looks and they take a beautiful family photo together. In the end, they kiss passionately. And this all happened because of Ms. Wiggins. Bryant brings Indy another cute kitten to celebrate a new chapter of her life. The movie ends with them being a happy family.